Okay, hi everyone and welcome to a new video. So this video is about Python and Firebase, the Firebase real-time database, and we're going to be using the Firebase library to sort of work with the real-time database and create data and insert data. So this is the first part of a Firebase Python real-time DB CRUD tutorial. So we're at the C, so we're at create. In the next video, we're going to read and then we're going to update and then we're going to delete. So this is pretty much how this will go. So for this video, we're inserting. So without further ado, let's get started. So I have an empty Python uh, PyCharm project right here. So I just created it. There's nothing there. So the first thing I want to do is I want to install Firebase. So I'm just going to go to the terminal and then pip install Firebase. All right. So I already have Firebase. So requirement is already satisfied. However, you can go ahead and download it. So you can wait a few minutes for Firebase to download and then you can get started. So I'm just going to create a new file. So why does this? Okay, so a new Python file, I'm going to call it Firebase real time DB demo. All right, so I have this file now and then what the logical thing here to do is that we have to create a Firebase project. So if we go to our tab right here, we have console.firebase.google.com. So, so this is where you go so you can create your Firebase project. So I'm just going to start by creating a new project and I'm just going to add project. So we have to give our project name. So we're just going to say Firebase Real-Time DB Demo. And then we're going to continue. So this doesn't really matter for our project, but we can just do it anyways. So now we're creating our project, we're waiting for everything to load. So let's just go back to PyCharm for a second and do the first and most important part, which is import Firebase. And next we're going to have a variable called Firebase config. And it's going to be an empty Python dictionary, which we're going to fill in just a minute. So our project is almost created. So now we just have to continue. All right, so now I'm inside this project. So if you're not familiar with it, this is what a project overview or dashboard looks like in Firebase. These are the different types of features that you have with Firebase. So you can use authentication. I have a video on that with Python as well. So you can check that out if you want. We have the database, which is what we're going to be doing. We have storage, hosting, everything else. I even have a video on cloud storage with Firebase and Python. So I will also link that below. So you can maybe benefit from it and see how you can upload and download files to and from the Firebase cloud storage. All right, so let's get started. We want to add Firebase to our app. So exactly what they say right here. So for Python, we have to go with web app. So this is neither iOS or Android or Unity. So we can just go to web. We give it a name. So we're just going to call it a uh, demo real time db app for code first. That's an entire mouthful, but okay. So we just have to register the application and we wait for Firebase to generate the credentials we need. So this is Firebase config, which we just added to Python, to PyCharm. So I just have to copy this, go to PyCharm and paste this here. All right, so now I have this dictionary here. There is one important point is that Python will not accept this as legitimate Python syntax. So these have to be um, strings. So I'm just going to take a minute to change everything to a string. Okay, so now we have the config for Firebase. What we must do then is to initialize a Firebase application. So we just do that by saying Firebase is equal. So Firebase is just the name of the variable. It's equal to Firebase dot initialize app. Firebase config. So this is what we have. Now we have an actual Firebase application inside the variable Firebase. All right, so let's just go back here to our Firebase console. And this is what we have. So we want to work with the database. So we go to the database. All right. Now here's the thing. Firebase provides us with two different types of databases. So we have one, the Cloud Firestore, which is one type of also no SQL database. And then we have the real-time database, which is another NoSQL database. And they're both document-oriented databases. So if you don't know what that is, so similar to MongoDB, which I have many tutorials and videos on, they sort of use this document type of syntax, or let's not say syntax, a representation, 
where it's a series of key value pairs and key value pairs can be nested with other documents and objects and arrays of values. So that's pretty much how the data is structured within Firebase and MongoDB as well. So it's the same thing for both Firestore and Realtime DB. Now, unfortunately, Firebase only provides support for Realtime DB and not Cloud Firestore. So through Firebase, you can use the authentication, the Realtime DB and storage, but you cannot benefit from the Cloud Firestore. So we're just going to create a new real-time database. So we have to start in test mode. Now we need read and write to be true, meaning anyone can add data. So this means you guys can take my API keys and just go ahead and add them and add data to my database that I'm gonna create right now. So I'll be deleting it in all cases, but you can. So it doesn't really matter. It's not sensitive data. So let's just enable it. So we enabled the, this type of rules that, we, that anyone can add or remove data from the database. So we have a warning, but that's not important. So now you know that we named our um, application. And so there it is. So we get this URL right here for the application that we just named. So this is sort of our Firebase URL for our database. Now, this isn't really important with the Firebase library, but it's important for a different library. So that's for another video. All right, so this is the database. Inside it, there is nothing. That's why it says null. So this is a key value pair and the answer here is null, meaning there is nothing inside the database. So let's just get started and get started with adding data. Now, before we can add data, we first have to um, connect to the database itself. So we have to tell Firebase that we want to work with the database and not, just, not any other feature. So that's what we have to do, right? Done. So here's the first thing we want to do. We want to push data. So like we said, data in Firebase is document oriented, meaning we can write our data in the same sort of JSON format or dictionary format with Python. So key value pairs, all right, name John, they're comma separated. So if you know JSON, you can um, easily understand this. Let's just keep this as an int. All right, and I can have the actual address to be an array of different values. So let's just say New York and Los Angeles. So he has two different addresses. All right, so this is the data that we're pushing. So we have to db.push data. So it's pretty straightforward. That's how you would insert your data and then you would have to run it. So running it, all right, so no errors, everything's fine. We go to our database, there's no need to refresh, and here we, we have a new um, element in our database, and this is John. He has an age of 20 and an address, which is an array of two different values. Now, what is this value right here? So this is the auto-generated key that we have, uh, that was generated by Firebase when pushing this document. So this is our document, and it has an auto-generated ID or key um, that it helps when you push your data. Now, if, the, if you hate this and you don't like it, you can have this done in another format. So you can create your own key. So what if you want John to be the key for his information? Now, I'm just going to demo it right here. So I'm gonna comment these out. All right, so create your own key. You have to use the set function. So db.child, We'll get into what child does in a minute. And you give it your the, the key you want. So db.child John. And then you use the set function for data. So let's just create data here and say that data is simply age is 20 and address is New York and LA. Okay, so let's just run this. Okay, so we're done, we go back here. And as you can see that this document right here has John himself as the key, so it has the name as the key, and the other information are childs of that key. Okay, so that's pretty much it. That's pretty much what you have here. This is the difference between pushing and then getting the data that, uh, getting the ID that Firebase decides to give 
to your um, document. And by the way, this is timestamp generated. So this is related to the timestamp with which you uploaded this data. Or you, here you have, you have set your own key. All right, so let's just talk about the child function right now. So child is similar to creating, um, you could say, a path for the data. So I'm just going to go back here to this data right here and where we just said db.push data. So how can we use the child function? So I'm just going to delete this and say db.child branch. I'm going to explain this in a minute. Dot child employee dot child um, male employees dot push data all right and now i can run this and if i go back so i have this new object in my database which is the firebase real time db demo so i go to branch which also has a child and that child is employee and then it has a child male employees and it has a new document within it which is john and his information Okay, so you can pretty much guess what child does. It creates sort of a path within your database. Now, why do I say path? So if I go to this right here, there's a sort of URL, if you can see. So it's the URL of the database slash branch slash employee slash male employees slash the ID. And if I go to John, the URL itself is going to be slash name. Okay, so, and you can navigate through the different parts of this database. So here you have the branch and the branch has employees, has male employees. So you can navigate, it's sort of a URL kind of system. So that's what we use child for. So that's pretty much the different um, aspects of inserting data with Firebase. So you can either just choose to push data into your DB. You can push the data into a certain path by writing the path using the child functions, or you can also, enter data into the database with the child with the child paths using the set function with set only adding the data to the respective parent or child of the db um, being the actual id so we can try this out here so if i just want to set here and i can just create another child uh, john's info okay so and I can use the set function and then I run it. And here we go. So inside male employees, I have another object and that's John's info and has his information. So here we did not let Firebase auto generate the key. We created one ourselves. So for creating data with Firebase real time DB, that's pretty much it. You have it all down. That's all you need to do. So thank you very much for watching and stay tuned for the next video where we're going to learn more about Firebase Real-Time DB and explore other CRUD aspects rather than just creation. Thank you.